Hey guys, I'm Chef Dean Max. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, a comfort food, tomato soup with grilled cheese. Can't beat that. So click subscribe if you're not doing that already. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and ring that bell and I'll send you new stuff coming up. So come back in a second. Hey guys, all right, we're here. Let's do some tomato soup. So first thing we need to do is get the tomato soup on. So um, let's get this work in. So I want to get my pot here going at a high speed, right? And what I want to do is start with some onions. It doesn't matter how you cut them. So how great is that? You don't have to worry about cutting them perfect. I just cut them in half like this and then uh, slice them in little like pieces. So if you have the half an onion, just slice that onion in half again and then come back the other way. And what you end up with is just this little bit of kind of diced up. I mean, it doesn't even matter how you cut them. Just, you want to cut them small enough where you're going to um, saute them up nicely. Um, I'm going to put those to the side. Now, I have some garlic cloves. I've got five garlic cloves here. And then what I want to do is I'm just going to slice the garlic, okay? And I'm, what I'm trying to do is I just want to get the garlic flavor going. Um, what's going to happen is we don't need to worry about the garlic looking any certain way because it's going to get pureed. This whole thing's getting pureed up, so we don't need to worry about the visual okay we just need to worry about how it's gonna look when it's pureed which is gonna be nice and red from these tomatoes so with this I'm gonna put my garlic in first and we were doing that with nice extra virgin olive oil because we wanted to um, we want to to flavor this oil okay now right after we right when that's getting nice and toasty that's what I'm gonna add in my spices so I've got some uh, sweet paprika. This is a beautiful Hungarian paprika I've got here. We're gonna open up. I've got some cashmere chili. That's kind of a spicy chili, like a cayenne chili. You could use cayenne because you probably have cayenne at home. Um, and then I'm gonna use a little bit of coriander powder, okay? So these are the three kind of spices that we're gonna hit this with um, when we get ready. So I'm kind of just wanna crack them open so we're ready to spice it up, okay? Um, I'll saute this up. And you can see the garlic is just lightly uh, flavoring at this point um, your, your oil. And I'm gonna put some cracked pepper in it too. I like to do that. Toast the pepper in there a little bit, it's nice. Okay, and then I don't put my powdered spices yet because uh, they'll, they'll get kind of clumpy and they'll burn quick. Um, now the garlic will burn quick too, so I don't want to uh, leave it in there too long without adding my onions. My onions pretty much cool this dish down because they're going to be adding all that um, kind of water from the onion. Now you can see the onion, um, how it just, it'll like stop the cooking process for a second, like stop the really hard sauteing because it has moisture, right? And that's what we're looking to do. We don't want, we don't really need to put color on this. I mean, if you got a little bit light brown, it's not gonna hurt anything, but you don't need to do that. So I've got Roma tomatoes. I like to use Roma tomatoes, especially because we have really great local Roma tomatoes. And I like to just cut them in half like this, lengthwise, and then I could probably cut them one more time, right? They're gonna break down anyway. So we, I just cut off the root end, you can say, cut it down lengthwise, lengthwise again, turn them sideways, right? And then cut them in half, right? And I've got a whole big bunch of here. How many do I have here? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11, 11 or 12, 10 or 12 uh, tomatoes. Uh, um, 10 or 12 of these Roma tomatoes is perfect amount. Um, to make this tomato soup. Because we want this to be super tomato-y, right? Um, now, with tomato soup, you don't have to have a stock. You could do this vegan. You could uh, you could add, uh, you don't have to have any cream in it at all. At the end, you could just puree it up smooth. Um, I am going to add a little cream because I'm serving it with grilled cheese and kind of an old classic. So when I do the, I'm using the grilled cheese. So if I'm going to eat um, dairy on that, I'm going to put some heavy cream in the soup too. Why not? Let's make it fun. But um, it's kind of thing you'll do in the fall too, or even the winter is great, you know? That's why Roma tomatoes are your best tomato, 
because Roma is a great um, greenhouse tomato. All right, now what's happening is my my onions are going to start to brown. It's okay because getting sweetness from an onion is okay. You just don't want to burn any garlic. But like I said, we don't need to do that. We just want to sweat them down a little bit. I'm going to go with my spices. Now, the chili, the cashmere chili is spicy. So I'm going to take one um, teaspoon, or like a, that's actually a quarter teaspoon. I'm going to do a half because I want to make it spicy, but not that spicy. Now, Hungarian paprika is not spicy. So I'm going to take a full tablespoon of that, okay? And then I'm going to take a half tablespoon of coriander powder, okay? So we got that in there and ready to roll. I'm going to to just toast my spices lightly like this. And then what I'm going to do is I've got sake. Now, I'm going to put sake in mine because, you know, sake is basically rice wine. It's got the you know the flavor of wine i would i would personally use a chardonnay but i drank all i had in the house right now so everything i have in the house is really a good chardonnay so i'm not going to put it in my soup but for for a wine like this you're looking for like a you know eight to ten or twelve dollar bottle of uh chardonnay um or pinot grigio just don't use anything sweet i wouldn't recommend anything sweet but you could do it if you like sweet wines put a sweet wine in there it's fine um now, I'm going to put a teaspoon of salt, because tomatoes need a lot of salt, right? And you can see that that's cooked and got, got nicely, um, the, the spices toasted, then that little bit of deglazing of the wine. I didn't add a lot of wine, I just added a little bit. And again, mine was a rice wine, so it's a sake. Um, again, you don't have to use sake at all, I just happen to have it. Um, I had some actually cooking sake that I use for different things that I make sauces with and stuff. So um, I had that around. What's the difference between cooking wine or cooking sake and regular sake and regular wine? Is that, you know, they just put salt in it. And they do that to really preserve the length of time that it's good. So you could keep it around in the kitchen. Probably did it to the chef didn't drink it too. I'm sure that was the main reason. But when you put salt in it, nobody wants to drink wine with salt in it, right? So um, if you taste it, it tastes like wine that has salt in it, and that's what it is. And so, um, and, and it, it, you know, you, should you use cooking wine or house wine? I don't know. You should use just regular, like regular wine because you, could always, you always kind of can have that around. Um, usually have it around. I should say I don't have it around right now, right? Because normally if you have an expensive, like, bottle of wine, you're not going to want to open it to put it in there. So I usually always have... Um, like moderate bottles of wine um, and then I'll open it up and I'll put one glass in here and I'll drink a few glasses so um, why not okay now with this my tomatoes are gonna cook in here see that how beautiful that looks okay now while that's just cooking slightly in here we're gonna add in what I add in is this frozen ice cube you see this um, this is basically uh, the reason it's kind of white on the top because that's fat, that's chicken fat, and the rest of it is just a chicken ice cube. And it's, um, and I'm gonna drop that in. Uh, you can click up here um, and learn how to make that. And basically what it is, it's a chicken stock that I've reduced down to a sauce level. So that chicken stock has been reduced down from a quart to that. So that's like if you had a quart of chicken stock. So for you at home, put a quart of chicken stock in there and then let me see we're gonna add some water just to cover the tomatoes okay so I add my water to cover the tomatoes my chicken stock because I don't really I don't really want it to reduce too much I'll put a lid on it and I'm gonna let that cook so we're gonna let this cook for it's probably gonna take about 20 or 30 minutes maybe 20 minutes 30 minutes to cook down come together nicely and then we're going to puree it and I'll show you what it looks like in a little bit um, but let me clean this up and then we're going to uh, make the, the grilled cheese okay see you in a second okay guys let's uh, while we're waiting for this to cook you can see it's simmer simmering away nicely look at that looks beautiful right all those flavors the tomato the onion the garlic the spices coming together it's going to make a great soup 
Um, for right now, let's do this. Let's bring my cheese up here. And I've got Fontina and Gruyere. Those are two that I particularly like for mine. But Brie is also a great one. Um, just, I would suggest using a nice cheese. Now, it's not, I mean, if you, if it's not too soft to grate, I would suggest grating it because grating it will give you, um, this one, this Fontina is almost a little too soft to grate. You might not, yeah, see, it looks good, but it's, it's almost too soft to grate. Now, I've got, I've got some real Gruyere here, so I'll cut this. And I'm going to put the Gruyere on the grater. The Gruyere is a little bit more aged. You know, it's like a Swiss, so it's going to be uh, more aged. And, and, uh, and so it's going to grate a lot nicer than Fontina is super soft. So if you got it, I had it sitting out for a second. That's why if it, if it was right out of the refrigerator, it would probably be okay. So I would say you could even probably stick it in the freezer if you wanted to grate it and, and uh, let it sit in there for a little bit. But I'm gonna take this Gruyere and just grate that nicely. Okay, like that. All the way down to the rind. And I love the rind. Okay. So we'll just put the Gruyere in here. I don't like to waste any of that. Super expensive cheese, you know, good French Gruyere. You know, it's gonna cost you, you know, 15, 18 bucks a a pound and it's worth every bit of it so don't use cheap cheese you know I mean obviously if it's for little kids they like cheap cheese and uh, unfortunately so that's what they do I've got a couple slices of bread I use a seeded bread I love seeded bread with that it's so nice but you use whatever you want um, with that I take the seeded bread and then I um, I'm gonna take thin slices of this Fontina, and I'm going to put this in the center. And I like to make it super cheesy, so so you guys make it however you want. But I'm going to put three slices like that, and then I'm going to put a nice handful of this uh, Gruyere on there too. So we've got the the Fontina's got a like a softness to it um, and a kind of meltiness but it's very flavorful too. And then the Gruyere's got that Swiss flavor, so it's gonna kick it up, okay? Then, I, I, what actually I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna sneak in, I got some black truffle, or excuse me, white truffle uh, cut of butter that I um, have in my fridge. I always keep it for pastas and things like that. So you can see it actually has little bits of truffle in it too. Now I don't need to put a lot of this. I'm putting like a teaspoon of this, and I'm gonna put this on the inside, and I wipe this on the inside. So as it's cooking, as my dish is cooking and that cheese is melting, it's going to be that flavor is on there. Now, I don't stick on the outsides because sometimes I cut crusts off depending on how I'm presenting it. But um, I'm going to put that like this. Now, I have some softened butter here, you can see. And I wipe that softened butter all over this outside of this bread. And this is not a dish to be squeamish on your, your butter. Okay, but that's it. And then what I'll do is I, I'll flip it. Now, I'm gonna turn on, I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna put a saute pan on for this. How's my, that's looking good. See that? We got about another 10 minutes on that. So I'll make one of these grilled cheese right now and start it off. Okay, so I'm gonna flip it right here. Normally what I would do is make these ahead of time. So. I would take them just like this, smear the butter on them, and then wrap them individually in plastic wrap. So I would take this, and I'll show you what, what I do with that. I would have, I have some plastic wrap right under here. So I would do this, I would take this like this, and I would wrap my, wrap it, my little cheese sandwich just like that in here. And I'm gonna put this in the fridge, and I'll be right back. Okay. I'm back, and what I want to do is make another one. So let's make another one of these. So three thin slices. And again, I it's better to keep them in the fridge because once you put that butter on there, you want the butter to get kind of cold and hard again on the outside. And then wait, later, you're going to see, we're going to take this one right now, and we're going to saute one up so you can see what it looks like. And I'm going to put this Gruyere on there. 
Then I'm going to close it up, right, like this. But actually, before I close it, I'm going to put a little of this truffle on the inside here. You can see it has truffle. See those bits of, of, of white truffle? This is a really nice condiment. Now, you can get this kind of thing online. You know, you can go onto an online, you just any online and just grocery and Google, like, you know, truffle butter. There's somebody selling it, right? So that just happens. That's the way, it, you know, that's the, way the world works these days. And it's actually amazing that that does happen because, you know, we need that, right? We want that stuff. Um, so there's somebody out there selling it. It's going to cost you a lot of money. That little jar might, this little jar might cost, uh, I would guess it costs 15, 20 bucks for that jar. But like I said, you don't need a lot of it. Like I've had that jar for a little while. Like I use, I'm using like a, with these two grilled cheeses, I'm going to use just like a 10th of that jar. So now I'm going to put this in my pan like that. Okay. And I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to let that saute. I'm going to wash my hands. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, while that cooks back there, I, um, I want, I don't, I want to leave it on like a medium heat. I want to get it nice crispy on both sides, golden brown on both sides. You don't want to go really fast because if you go really fast, what happens is the center of the cheese inside the bread sandwich doesn't get hot enough. You want it to be, you know, perfectly balanced like that. Okay. So while we wait, I'm going to make one more of these because I got enough cheese to make one more. So let's do this. Let's cut this cheese here. Okay. And we're going to add now, like I said, you can add any cheese you want. If there are certain cheeses that you like better than Swiss or Gruyere or, uh, or Fontina, that's fine. Well, this one's got, this guy's going to get a little bit more here. That must be friends and family right there, right? Mmm, so good. I don't eat a lot of dairy all the time. I, I, not like I'm allergic or anything. I just try to stay healthy and try to cut my dairy back. But phew, dairy is so good, you guys. I can't stand it sometimes. So I have to have good dairy. Um, but I, when I do have it, um, I make sure to buy good stuff. Good, try to get good butter, good cheese. You know, and I don't waste it on bad dairy, I should say. So um, I've got my truffle butter on there. Boom. Close this up. And then I'm going to take my softened butter here. Okay. Just like that. And then I'll flip it here. And I'm going to put it on this side too. Lots of butter you can see, right? I don't play any games when it comes to the butter. Okay. So that's that. Let's see how our toast is doing. So with the toast, we're going to flip it. Whoop. There you go. Okay. Nice dark golden brown. Okay. That is not burnt. Okay. <laughs> Some of you guys are like, Oh, it looks burnt. No, it does not look burnt. It's beautiful. This is what you want this nice dark color. Now, now that we've got it good color on that side, I want to turn it down now. And I'm going to turn it down to a really low temperature like my, one of my lower settings. I'm going to let that finish and let the heat residual heat toast that side, but also uh, get the inside nice and hot. We'll take a look at that in a second. So we're going to let this soup. Whoa, that's hot. Okay. My handle's hot, but um, this soup you can see is really coming together. Let's take a look. I got to blow it away so you can see it. Look at the tomatoes breaking down nicely. Now, when you guys have this kind of a tomato soup versus having a tomato soup where you're using canned tomatoes, I'm telling you, this is so much nicer. Fresh tomatoes, letting them come together. The freshness that you get from that, it's incredible. So I'll see you guys back. I'm going to let this soup cook a little bit longer, and then um, we'll come back to check it out. Okay, guys, let's take this off and take a look at it. You want to flip it? All right, look how beautiful that looks. Nicely toasted um, grilled cheese. And then from here, you want to let it sit because it's super hot and melty in there. We want to let it melt throughout. And, but if I cut it, it's just going to run all over the place. If we let it rest for a second, <clears throat> when you cut it, it'll stay in there. So we're going to let this sit for a little bit and then we're going to finish our soup up. So come back in a little bit and we're going to um, 
we're going to cook this soup and, uh, and puree it up, okay? Um, what I will do right now is let's add a little cream to it. So I'm going to take off my lid here carefully because it's going to be hot, okay? And be careful when you do that. See, it's cooking really strong now. And then I'm going to take, I have this extra melted butter that I am not using on the bread, but it's going to do wonders in our soup there. And I'm going to add some heavy cream. So with that, probably just a, not, this, this is um, a pint, so it's a half a pint. So half a pint of cream, okay, for those 12, uh, 10 to 12 Roma tomatoes, all right? Now, what I want to do is just taste the flavor of this broth just a touch. If you wanted to, you could put a little of that white truffle cream in here too. I mean the butter. Oh, yeah. So what I'm tasting for now is salt. I'm tasting for spice. It has the perfect amount of spice. That was that chili, that amount of chili gave us just the right amount of heat. If you want it hotter, you can add a little bit more cayenne. Um, if you like more paprika, you can put a little bit more in. But uh, this, that was money right where it is. So I'm going to turn this down now. We're going to let this cook for about six to eight more minutes. And we're going to puree it up. We're going to have tomato soup. See you back. Okay, guys, um, I just turned this off, and you can see it's cooked for another 10 minutes. So really like 20, 25 minutes tops for this. Um, and then I'm going to actually put a little bit of lemon juice in there, squeeze a half a lemon. I like to do that to give it a little fresh acidity. You can leave that out if you want. If you're not a fan, don't do it. Um, and then I've got like with my little uh, hand mixer here. And I'm going to just blend this baby up with my hand mixer. Because, you know, I'm making this kind of rustic style with uh, grilled cheese. I don't need it to be, like, uh, perfectly smoothly pureed into, like, this elegant velvety. I mean, it's still going to be super velvety. It's just going to have a little texture in it, which is nice. I don't want to lift this up too much because the more you lift it up, the more it spits around the place. So I'm just going to move it around with this, like this. And I'm going to keep, keep blending. You guys see how that works, right? Look at that. We've got ourselves a beautiful looking soup, don't we? I'll just keep moving it. Now look at that. I've got a little bit in here in my... Thing. Uh, there we go. There was a high speed. So we're going to go up high speed up. I'm going to lift it up a little bit. I don't want to lift it too high. Okay. Now what I want to look at is the texture. See how there's no skins? You don't see any skins or anything like that? Damn, that's good. I'm sorry. But uh, that's really good. So I'm just going to take this. And I'm going to put this in my soup bowl. Got myself a nice, a nice beautiful soup here. Let me move this to the front. I'll move this all around here. So I've got my soup here. Beautiful. You guys can see that, right? And then I'm going to show you a way to cut this. So it like it makes it more manageable, okay? So it's all about like eating and like how, how you know, e the ease of eating, I should say. Now, kids don't like crust. You can take the crust off, but you don't have to. I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to cut this in, in opposite ways here. So triangle there, triangle back here, okay? And then that gives us these beautiful little... Um, pieces that you can stand up, lay down, whatever you want to do with them, right? Look at that. And you've got yourself a beautiful dish right there, right? Um, grilled cheese. Oh. We're back. Beautiful truffle oil. Truffle, if you don't have the truffle butter, 
Maybe buy a tiny truffle oil, white truffle oil. The alcohol you last. Super tasty. You can get it at one of your fancy grocery stores you have around your house. And this soup is perfect. This is going to make everybody happy. That's for sure. Mmm. I can't stop eating it. Okay? Beautiful grilled cheese, tomato soup. Doesn't get any easier. You saw how fresh that was. Stop using canned tomatoes for that. Use a fresh tomato. Cook it nice. Treat it well. Eat well. I'll see you back in my kitchen soon. I'm Chef Dean Max.